Hello and welcome again to the Revelations 2012 Let's Play, this time on the level The Sacrifice Altar, which is probably one of the most generic and bland level titles so far. I mean, the last level was bland in of itself, but at least the title made me look up the definition of the word Synote. And this stage gets stuck right into the action with an armoured warbore and a 60,000 health juggernaut right out of the gate. Now, when the path splits here, you can go either right or left. You want to head left, the reason for this will become fairly apparent later. And as you can see in that hut over there, there's laser guns, green secondary ammunition. I've not really demonstrated this so far, and I failed to do so here. Basically, if you shoot a teammate with it, it gives them an aura around their body, which makes them completely invincible to damage for the time being. See, here I try, I completely miss the shot. Or rather, it phases through. There we go. I managed to hit Kelly with it, though. It gives her a shield, which makes her completely invincible. And this is why you want to approach the left side of the Juggernaut fight, because you can pick up the Time Warp Gun, which is much better for fighting the Juggernaut than if you approached from the right side and triggered the fight with only your white pea shooter gun and the green laser gun, which doesn't put you in the best of positions for fighting the Juggernaut. As it stands with the Time Warp Gun, it's very easy, especially considering one of your party members is made invincible right now. The laser gun secondary fire is extremely useful, kind of overpowered, and as a result it only appears in like the last three levels of the game. If it appeared earlier, it appears so infrequently that it barely matters. And you yourself never get to experience the benefits of it because the bots don't use secondary fire. Ever. I would imagine a competent team of human players could probably exploit the shit out of this invincibility power to really blow wide open the expert difficulties of the game. Mind you, this isn't to say that it doesn't have interesting applications even on your own. You'll see more of this later. So now there's stalactites blocking the way forward, so obviously we need to fart around and get some skulls to continue the level. Yay! It's at this point I really began to wonder why. You know, what was my motivation for doing this? What exactly is the plot of Revelations 2012? Because if there's an in-game plot, then it's long gone. And that's actually just it. There was a plot. It's long gone. There used to be an opening cutscene to this game. This is a recent development that I've discovered and it blew my mind. But yeah, there used to be an opening cutscene, and for some reason, during the update process, I guess it just vanished or something. The idea of the game is that you're supposed to be killing these gods to collect their magical MacGuffin crystals so the mother of the gods can restore balance to the world or some ridiculous bullshit like that. It's not a particularly complicated plot. I mean, did you expect anything less from Revelations 2012, really? But still, the game has a plot, ostensibly. And while I'm talking about plot, why not talk about characters? We've not really taken a look at our protagonist so far. Presently, I am playing as Megan. She is an aerobics instructor. And while I'm also discussing characters, the power armor that every single character in this game is wearing is another thing that was added in one of the recent update things that made the game borderline playable, which is kind of sad. Megan used to have an iPod Nano constantly strapped to her wrist. I thought it was a neat touch, anyway. It gave you more insight into what the characters are like. Now they all look basically the same. Yeah, I mean, the game got playable in exchange for that, so I'm willing to take the trade, but still, you couldn't have left the neat touches in? I don't know if any of the other characters had anything like that. Corey is an archaeologist, and according to one of the comics about the game that describes the game's plot, yes, really, this is a thing, check the OP post, he's the one who finds the mystical bangle that guides all of the Chosen Ones, as they are called, the four people, to the place that they eventually go to and then end up facing the minor plot. The plot of this game makes no sense, and I don't know why I'm overanalyzing it. Ben's an army dude, and Kelly's a lawyer. They have nothing special about them, really. No personality at all. Although really, it'd be a lot easier to tell what their occupations were if you were just able to look at the character model, rather than having to dig through Dark Arts' website to find character bios for them. Ben used to wear army cargo pants, and Kelly was just kind of dressed in formal attire. I'm not really sure who thought power armor was a smart idea for overhauling the game. It just kind of destroyed any sense of individuality any of the characters might have had. I find the lack of character interaction in general a bit puzzling. Left 4 Dead had tons of conversations between the survivors that really felt like you got to know these people. And while Revelations 2012 actually has shitloads of recorded lines for conversations like this in the game files, like, none of them end up actually being used in the game itself. It's quite weird, actually. Did they just forget to put them in the game or something? I wouldn't put it past them. They seem to have forgotten a lot of things. They forgot the fucking opening cutscene. 
You've doubtlessly noticed at this point how I'm abstaining as much as possible from actually commenting on the gameplay, and that's because I'm convinced that little cave running section we did earlier is entirely copy-paste lifted from another section of the game. I don't know this, I can't prove this, and I don't really want to prove this. But the fact that I'm even having my suspicions that this level is the equivalent of backgrounds in a Tom Preston comic isn't a good sign. I mean, the stage is basically over at this point, the teleport pad is right up there, and this last set of armoured warboards exists almost purely as an annoying delaying tactic. And that boar knocked the time warp gun straight out of my hands. I did notice, and I do pick it up, but I don't actually make the logical connection until well after I shot this entire LP. I can be bafflingly thick sometimes. And the AI is getting knocked down by the boars. Brilliant. I don't know why I'm taking my time here to save them, and I don't think it's actually necessary. I keep thinking the game functions under Left 4 Dead rules, where you need all your teammates alive. But once I get halfway through going back to save them, because I'm thinking, oh no, they need to be up in order for me to complete the stage, I should protect them with my laser gun, ah ha ha, I realise that's not necessary at all, and I bugger off towards the teleport pad. Because in Revelations 2012, it doesn't matter at all whether or not your teammates are with you when you enter the teleport pad. Or at least if they do need to be with you, the range with which you can get away with it is staggeringly huge. I don't think there is one, frankly. Anyway, this episode is over, this stage was boring, and I thank you for watching this episode of Let's Play Revelations 2012. I'll see you next time.